Carbohydrates are not essential. Our body can make glucose when it's needed. Why do we have to eat it in order to have a good quality of life? Our body cannot make fat. Our body cannot make protein. We have to eat them. What's going on, everybody? It's Coach Bronson here. We got a fun one today. Today, we are going to talk about the sustainability of the ketogenic diet. Is it something that's sustainable? Is it something we can do for long term? And is it going to be so detrimental to all the aspects of our health, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? You've heard all the things, right? Well, let's talk about them. Before we do that, please subscribe to this channel. Make sure that you hit the hit the bell so you're notified every time I come out with a new video. There's usually two a week. And most importantly, if you think there's something in this video that's going to help someone you know, please share it with them. Tell them to subscribe and let's get this thing going. All right. Now, the ketogenic diet, is it sustainable? I think so. I've been doing it for almost seven years. Uh, we'll talk about that. First, let's talk about what is the ketogenic diet because a lot of people don't know what the ketogenic diet is. And let's just start with a, a different take. If I were to come up to you and say, hey, what do you think about a diet where I prioritize animal meat, red meat specifically, I don't eat any processed foods, and I limit um, a lot of the vegetables in my life that I know cause me problems, right? Maybe it's oxalate, maybe it's inflammation, maybe it's nightshades and I have a reaction. Maybe there's some other, um, something else that kind of causes something in my body, right? Everybody reacts differently to different things. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to try to get as much animal meat as possible. I'm going to cut out the things I know impact me, but I'm going to keep everything that I eat whole foods. I'm not going to eat any processed foods and I'm going to focus on getting as much nutrition that my body can actually use as possible. I'm going to focus on getting as much healthy fats as possible. And I'm gonna try and make sure that I'm eating enough and eating the right combinations of things from a whole food, whole food perspective that it's going to keep me full and satiated so that I don't uh, have as many cravings and I don't overeat. If someone came to you with that picture, you would say, that sounds awesome, man, go for it, have a blast. That's the keto diet. That is a ketogenic diet. Focusing on animal meat, focus a whole, uh, that is a whole foods ketogenic diet. And this is where we get some of the, the things mixed up in the definition of what people actually are doing. A whole foods ketogenic diet is animal based, natural, whole foods, healthy fats, mostly animal fats. Um, and then keeping your vegetable carb intake to a minimum in order to reduce the negative impacts of those things. Not everybody has the same level. Some people can be on a ketogenic diet at 100 carbs a day. Some people need to be at 50. Some people need to be at 25. Everyone's a little different. Some people can change over time. As you become more metabolically flexible, um, as you become more, get more lean mass, as you exercise and throw other aspects of, of health improvement into it, it's going to change where you're at with different things. Now, so if we set that as the baseline, that's the ketogenic diet. I don't know anybody who would look at that and say that's not sustainable. Where we get the confusion is when people talk about the ketogenic diet from the relation of the reduction in protein, the elimination or major reduction of carbohydrates from 50 to 25 on average is kind of where the, the clinical definition of ketogenic is with an increase in fat and supplementation of ketones. Right. So the medical utilization of a ketogenic diet versus I'm using a ketogenic diet to improve my health. We're talking about getting your body good at breaking down fat, creating ketones, and then using ketones. Where people think traditional health coaches, nutritionists, et cetera, think that this is unsustainable is because. They're looking at it in the context primarily of carbohydrates being a food group, looking at the, the food pyramid and believing the propaganda, which is not a word I use lightly, but it's essentially that's where we're at with this whole thing at this point, um, that we need carbs more than we need fat or protein, number one, which we know is a false belief. The second false belief is that saturated fats, animal fats are harmful. We know that's also 
a false belief. That is a non-fact. And then the second one being that we don't need as much protein as we think we need. And protein actually can can lead to cancers and other types of things because of mTOR, because of TMAO and all the other different lies that have been set out there about red meat and, and meat in general protein. So the idea that it's not sustainable firstly comes from these um, untruths about nutrition as a whole. Everything about the ketogenic diet flies in the face of the food pyramid and what is actually important to human nutrition, number one. Number two, the idea, and I don't know where this comes from, the idea that restricting something in your nutrition is an unhealthy outlook or mindset around food boggles my mind. Any dietitian that I've ever known in my life will tell you that it is a good idea to reduce your alcohol consumption in order to maintain health. Flat out. I've never met a dietitian or a nutritionist who, who recommended that you drink alcohol in moderation in order to live a healthy life and a healthy quality of life. No food is bad, including alcohol. Never heard it once in my life. How is it any different? Alcohol is technically a macronutrient. I don't know if you guys know that. Alcohol is technically a macronutrient. No micronutrition. It's a whole another discussion. So if it's okay to restrict alcohol because of its completely de um, detrimental effects to human health, if somebody is having negative effects on their health from carbs or plants or anything else, and they cut that out, reduce it, whatever it may be, whether it's 100% you go carnivore, or whether it's you go from hundreds of grams a day to 50 grams a day, whatever the changes that you make, if you make that change and your health improves, someone please explain to me how is that wrong and how is that unsustainable? It makes no sense to me. I don't understand. It's okay to cut this out, but you need this, right? Why? There, we know, here's another scientific fact. Carbohydrates are not essential. The same people, here's, here's the, the cognitive dissonance in the traditional nutrition space. Yes, we understand that carbohydrates are not essential, but you need them to have a good quality of life. How does that work? Alcohol is not essential. I don't need it to have a, a good quality of life. What's the difference? Cocaine is an essential. I don't need it to have a good quality of life. What's the difference? Our body can make glycogen, excuse me, glucose when it's needed. Why do we have to eat it in order to have a good quality of life? Our body cannot make fat. Our body cannot make protein. We have to eat them. If we want new sources of protein, if we want new sources of fats in our body, we have to eat them. Our body can break down stuff that we have, but that's not the point unless, well, outside of body fat, we want it to break down body fat because we're trying to lose that, but we don't want it to break down muscle. We don't want it to break down proteins in our body to, to use right? We want to give that stuff so that we're adding to our body when it comes to protein. Our body can turn all sorts of things into glucose, all sorts of things. Look up gluconeogenesis. Protein amino acids is one thing on the list and it's at the bottom. The idea that eating a whole foods animal-based diet that is low on detrimental carbs, I'll just say detrimental carbs, it doesn't have to be all carbs. You can be ketogenic. I, if I want to have um, a sweet potato every once in a while, go for it. Have a blast. If it, does, if it doesn't bother me, I don't have any real reaction to it, um, and I like them. If I want to do that, that's totally up to me. It's, it's a blast. It's fine. It's, there's nothing unsustainable about that. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. I call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube. Go to bodyconfidentbook.com. I have been eating a 95% or higher animal-based only diet for over six years. I have seen 
nothing but improvement in my overall health. I have seen zero reduction in any factor, metric, or measure of my health or quality of life. I'm 52 years old. I am in better shape and better physically capable than I've ever been in my life. There is absolutely no way that anyone can tell me, and we can get into the practical side of this thing, right? We can, we can get into the practical of recipes and options, and it just gets boring and whatever. That's all in your head, guys. The number of things, here's, here's the thing that, that, that really I think is hilarious when it comes to the, the, the topic of boring and variation and stuff like that. When I ate standard American diet, I had four meals that I went to all the time. Four. I had the same breakfast every day. I had the same lunch every day. I had the same dinner every day. On the weekends, I might switch up dinner and lunch, but that was it. Like there were four, maybe five different things that I ate all the time. It's not, I, I'm not the person. Most people aren't. Most of my clients are the same way. This is what I eat. When we say there's not enough variation in a ketogenic diet, what we're saying is I don't get the foods that I'm used to getting that I enjoy. That happens to anybody. The same people that say there's no variation, it's not sustainable, are equating that to, here's an example, a bodybuilder who's on prep for 12 weeks, who's eating bland chicken breast and bland rice because they're trying to stay low fat. That is not a ketogenic diet. I mean, technically it is a ketogenic diet, but that doesn't know without the rice or all that rice, but that isn't what this is about. The ketogenic diet can be very enjoyable. Okay, guys, if you knew how much I enjoyed attacking my ground beef and runny eggs, oh my God, I feel like an animal every day when I eat, when I eat uh, breakfast or, or dinner. The ability for you to enjoy your food. Number one, yes, we want to enjoy our food, but we don't necessarily need to. That's a whole nother, we could probably do another video on that. But if enjoyment of your food is important to you, there are dozens of cookbooks out there on how to cook meat, how to make different meals. I know my friend Courtney Luna has a cookbook. She's a chef who has done a ton of amazing things with different recipes that are fantastically enjoyable, fun to make, and tastes great. Maria Emmerich is another friend of mine who's got the most cookbooks from a ketogenic carnivore perspective out there, I think, in the world, the most of anybody. If she, if you can't find a carnivore or ketogenic recipe that she's got in her books, then it doesn't exist. So go look up Maria Emmerich. Go look up Courtney Luna. Um, I think Courtney's book, cookbook, comes out in October. Maria's got a ton of books that are out already. Um, go get those. The variety options, the variety and options that are available, just thinking about the different meats that you can get and how you can cook just the meats. We're not even talking about any of the other stuff that you can throw in there with the meats, right? Because again, ketogenic doesn't have to be carnivore. Carnivore is a ketogenic diet. That doesn't mean you have to go carnivore to get the benefits of a ketogenic diet. If you still want to have some veggies, if you still want to have some potatoes or even right, go for it, have a blast, figure out what works for you. But the argument that a ketogenic diet isn't sustainable is, in my opinion, absolutely ludicrous. And if it's working for you, is your health important enough for you to figure out how to make it sustainable? All right. Just my thoughts on the whole topic. I felt like that was a little bit of a rant. I might've gone in circles. If you have any questions, as always, guys, let me know, but I love having conversations like this. And I'll talk to you soon. Hey there, did you know that I have a free community on Discord? If you go to discord.coachbronson.com, you can join my community. You can meet other people. You can engage in a group of individuals who are all searching for and having success in finding their context and the solutions that will work best for them. Hop yourself in there, discord.coachbronson.com. See you soon.